Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to the next video of developing microservice with ASP.NET Core 6.0 Minimal API and in this video we'll be talking about how to perform post and put operation in microservice that we have been developing all these days. All right, so let's get started. So in the last video, we created this microservice at least by integrating it with the entity framework. We also seeded data and we know how this microservice has been working all these days. And we also got rid of the existing hard-coded uh, data that we have been using from our employee uh, model. So probably I'm gonna get rid of this code as well, which is not even required. So you can see that the code is now very, very short. It's very, very uh, easy to read. And that's the power of the minimal API of ASP.NET Core itself. It's gonna make your life much easier if you use that. All right, but now what we're gonna do is we are gonna make use of even more uh, operations, something like I'm gonna get rid of unnecessary calls. So this is gonna be giving us all the uh, employees that we have got and what if we want to get just a specific employee so for doing that I can just uh, do something like a parameter so that I can just get a specific employee instead of getting all the uh, employees that we are uh, getting over here so for doing that I'm actually gonna do another call so app dot uh, map get so that's gonna be a get operation that we are going to do uh, and then it's going to be slash employee slash ID something like this uh, and then I'm gonna say comma uh, same lambda attributes so from service employee DB context of DB comma string of ID something like this and over here what I'm going to do is uh, we need to somehow get the data that we are looking for so for doing that I'm just going to do db dot employee dot select of x such that x dot employee id is equal to the id that I'm passing in uh, as a parameter and once we have this uh, we can return that particular employee so I can just return that employee alone so return first or default something like this so we can return that cool so that's going to give us the employee that we are looking for so let's try running this code and see how it actually works so if I just put the employee of one that's going to give me true because I'm actually uh, returning the first or default. So instead, I just can do something like where, um, something like that, because this thing will return as the employee that I'm looking for instead of the select, probably. There you go, because the select is actually going to return as the, the Boolean. That's why it's returning as the true. Uh, hopefully now if I just do slash employee of one, it's going to give me the Kartik as you can see over here. And now if I pass two, it's going to give me Jacob, which is cool. Uh, so now that the parameter that we're passing in is also working fine. So we can get a specific employee instead of the list of employees. And if I want to get, or probably if I want to make a put operation uh, of a specific employee, I can do that as well. So instead of uh, you know, wasting our time in writing the same code again and again, I'm just going to copy paste some of the code and I'm just going to do an employee because I'm going to do a put operation. I need to need the whole employee like this. And over here, I'm just going to do this. So DB dot employee dot update because I'm going to do an update operation of the employee that I'm passing in. And I also need the DB to perform a save change operation. And once it is done, I need to return the uh, DB dot employees dot where the X is equal to X dot ID uh, is equal to the employee dot employee ID. Uh, probably not fast default dot to list I could do that over here 
I don't have to return this list. Like probably first start default looks very very uh, meaningful than to list because it's going to be the first employee that I'm going to return in. So that's going to perform a put operation on a specific employee so we can uh, make that happen. So I'm just going to open the postman just in case so that I can show you how we can do that post operation because I cannot do that in the browser. So I have it over here. Uh, so you can see that I'm actually trying to do a put operation of the employees, um, probably not employees, it's going to be employee and I will perform uh, employee three operation or maybe employee two operation on the ID for the Jacob and I'm going to change the citizenship from US to Australia, something like that. So let's see how it actually works. So I'm just going to run this uh, code and i'm going to do a change right now so i'm just going to do a put operation um which it says it's not gonna work oh sorry about that i have to change this map get that's the problem of copy pasting so let's try doing it now and i'm getting an error here what does it say? It's unable to track an entity of type employee because its primary key employee ID is null. Uh, his employee ID is null still now. I thought we we fixed that issue in our earlier videos. Uh, let's try doing it. No, it's looking all right to me. Ah, it's going to be employee ID instead of the ID itself. I'm sorry for that because I was working on a different. project and it's looking a bit different this time okay cool i think it should be the employee id should be like id instead of the employee id and that's the reason the whole confusion is coming through uh so let's try doing it now all right now it looks good so now the jacob is uh in two uh which is going to be for the australia so you can see it's it's working fine as well so now if i just try to do a get operation um, of this particular uh, local host of the employee something like this slash employee you could see that we get uh, both the uh, employee one uh, and two with the name as Jacob and his citizenship is Australia, so which means it's been updated right now, which is cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform the last op operation, which is going to be the post operation, which will complete our whole code that we have been writing. So then we could see that we would have already developed a microservice by then. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do an app dot map post operation instead of a put operation that we saw earlier and i'm going to do an employees or employee uh, of the from service of the db context so all these codes are going to remain the same and i'm going to paste them all over here something like this and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to perform an uh, add operation this time so db dot employee dot add which is going to add a new employee for me which is going to be this one uh, and once it is added i need to do a db dot save changes uh, and once this saves and once the data has been saved then i'm going to return the db dot employee dot to list to show that all the employees are being added and the new list will be published to the caller. So that's going to be the post operation as well. So that's the complete uh, microservice that we have built right now. I think that should be all right for now. Uh, so I'm going to do a post operation. So let's do a post of the, uh, the employee and there is going to be a new employee. Let's call him as Ramesh and his citizenship is NZ and he is going to be added into our troop right now. So you can see that one, two and three, three Ramesh has been added as well, which is cool. So now if I add for uh, something like a Mark and he is from UK. Uh, so if I add this employee, you will see that that employee will be added as well. 
which is cool. So now if I do all the get operation, it returns all the employees for me, which is cool. So this is how we can build a super simple microservice using ASP.NET Core 6.0 using the minimal API and also with the backend as the entity framework. In our next video, we'll see how we could actually use the same code to deploy with an a Docker container and also how we could able to access the same using the Docker container uh, instead of uh, doing it from the code over here. Thank you.